Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a crime, drama, and thriller film called Sleep Tight. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. At the edge of an apartment building, a concierge named Caesar contemplates how he is unable to find any source of happiness no matter how much he tries to search for it. Despite having good things happen to him, he remains restless and dissatisfied with the life he's living. At exactly 5 a.m., he wakes up beside Clara, a tenant of the building, and goes about his daily routine of working at the building. At the lobby, Caesar secretly hands money to Ursula, a tenant's daughter, which seems like a usual thing between the two. By the entrance, Clara and Caesar also stumble upon Veronica, another tenant who is fond of her dogs. After greeting the elderly lady, Clara reminds Caesar that her sink is clogged and needs immediate repair, to which he replies that he will drop by to fix it. Throughout the day, Caesar continues working before visiting his mother at the hospital. Because of her condition, she is unable to speak and is completely immobile, but she listens to him talk about Clara whenever he pays a visit. Back at the building, the supervisor scolds Caesar for being late for two consecutive days. He tries to defend himself, but the supervisor gets more irritated. Their conversation is cut short when Veronica appears, asking Caesar a favor. She needs someone to look after her dogs while she attends a birthday party, giving detailed instructions on how to feed her pets. Caesar agrees and proceeds to Veronica's apartment after entrusting the office keys to the cleaning lady and her son. He feeds the dogs their food, but contrary to the old lady's instructions, he adds a slice of pie to the one named Rocio. Meanwhile, Clara arrives at her place where she opens several letters which she then throws away. She continues the night by dancing around all while Caesar hides under her bed unnoticed. He patiently waits for her to fall asleep and uses a mirror to make sure that she is completely unconscious. He then uses chloroform on Clara, making sure she goes into a deep sleep. He uncovers her sheets to look at her underwear before heading to the bathroom to mess with her toiletries. He adds an unknown substance to her care products using a syringe before laying with Clara in bed. Again, at 5 a.m., Caesar wakes up to go about his routine, even using Clara's personal supplies. When he leaves, Ursula stands outside telling him she will not let anyone know about Caesar's doings if he provides her with an explicit adult movie. Without a choice, he makes a deal with the little girl to conceal his dirty deeds. That day, Veronica walks into the lobby with only one dog, so Caesar asks what happened to Rocio, and she explains that the dog currently has diarrhea. As part of his work, he inserts mail into the tenant's mailboxes and even adds several letters in Clara's box, revealing that he has been the one sending the mysterious letters. In Clara's room, Clara continuously uses the care products without knowing that Caesar has gone through them. When she arrives at the lobby, she asks Caesar if he has seen a watch that seems to be missing in her apartment, but he denies that he has. However, he lets her know that she will be informed if he ever sees it. Later that day, while Caesar writes more letters, Ursula sneaks out of school to ask for the adult movie which he hands to her. She also tells him that she has grown closer to Clara in the past few days and that the price for her being quiet will now be at 100 euros. Caesar is impressed but annoyed with the kid's extortion abilities. He then shoes her away. At the lobby, the supervisor scolds him once more for not tending to the plants that led them to die. He becomes successful at angering another tenant because of this, not to mention the growing frustration of his supervisor toward him. Caesar tells it to his mother who he visits again that day. He also adds that he is almost successful in his aim to wipe Clara's smile off her face because he wishes to make his tenants frustrated, a goal he has been working on for quite some time. That night, Caesar informs the cleaning lady that the main office was not cleaned which leads the cleaner's son to trouble, despite Caesar's claims not being true. After, he heads to Clara's apartment to fix the sink clog he had orchestrated and ruins her watch. Hiding once again under Clara's bed, he patiently waits for her to fall asleep while she talks to her boyfriend on the phone. Once done, he uses chloroform to maintain her deep sleep as he continues to sabotage more of her items in an attempt to upset her. This time, he plants bug eggs in different areas of her apartment. Days pass and Clara develops a rash. This negatively affects her, and her mood and demeanor noticeably change. For weeks, she has no idea that Caesar is behind her suffering, and that he shares the same bed with him every night. The letters addressed to her are written as if she has a stalker but little does she know, it is from the very man to who she entrusts her apartment to. The following week, Clara's rashes have subsided, putting her in a state of relief, but not for long. As she opens her medicine cabinet, she sees bugs all over it. She rushes to the lobby to ask for help from none other than Caesar. Clearly, he is highly entertained by the situation and gets satisfaction out of people's struggles. Because of the infestation in her apartment, 
Clara decides to stay at her mother's place until Caesar fumigates her apartment. Clara and Caesar enter the elevator together, and Caesar asks about the guy harassing her. Clara gets weirded out because she hasn't talked to anyone about it, but Caesar insists that she might have shared it with Veronica, and Veronica might have told him. She also adds that the police have tracked down the signal of her harasser, and reveals that the culprit lives in the same building. Clara subtly says that the police are getting closer to catching the guy. Deeply concerned about how far he has gone, Caesar expresses his worries to his mother who has no choice but to listen to how her son copes with his mental struggles. He also tells his mother that he will do all it takes to make Clara miserable, so he starts to come up with ways to devastate her as he cleans the apartment. The supervisor interrupts him and claims that Caesar is a waste of space as he does not last long in his past jobs. He rudely tells Caesar to start looking for a new source of income as he is on the brink of unemployment once more. That same day, three police officers enter the building, asking Caesar if they could have a word with him. The officers gather the staff around a room to investigate Clara's complaints of being harassed. Despite this, Caesar remains composed and unbothered by the situation, even when asked to his access to the office. He leads the police officers to the cleaner son's locker where they find yellow envelopes similar to the harassers. Caesar has successfully framed the poor boy and results in the boy getting arrested. From a payphone booth, Caesar calls Clara to inform her that the apartment has been fumigated and is in its prime condition. Clara gladly tells him that she is excited to get back home. To prepare for her arrival, Caesar heads back to his quarters to prepare several tools he needs to sabotage Clara's place even more. He disturbingly holds a knife beside her empty bed, as if practicing how to stab someone. He then crawls under the bed. Not long after, he sees that Clara invited her boyfriend Marcos over to spend the night together. All this time, Caesar is under the bed while the couple gets intimate with each other, causing the bed to bounce. Caesar accidentally drops some chloroform on his face. Desperately battling the effects of the substance, Caesar makes his way out of the bedroom while the two are making love. As he attempts to leave the apartment, he realizes that he has the wrong set of keys, leaving him locked inside. The following day, he wakes up in Clara's bathroom, while Clara prepares her bath. Caesar tries to be as quiet as possible, but Marcos finds Caesar's sports bag with numerous suspicious items. They unpack the bag full of tools and find Caesar's diary where he logs the tenant's activities and routines. As they start to read it, Clara becomes dizzy, so Marcos tends to her, completely disregarding the suspicious bag. This also gives Caesar the opportunity to exit the bathroom and hide in the kitchen, but Marcos comes into the kitchen to find something to eat. While they make a grocery list, Caesar hides, hoping that the couple wouldn't come any closer. The couple playfully hangs out in the living room on the way to the bathroom, so Caesar waits for the perfect time to pass unnoticed and retrieve the keys to get out. He successfully enters the bedroom and secures the key in his diary, but on his way out, Marcos gets a glimpse of him and follows him to the door. When Marcos catches him, Caesar asks who he is, causing a commotion in the apartment until Clara enters the scene to calm the two men down. She explains that Marcos is her boyfriend and that Caesar should not worry about anything. When asked why he is in the apartment, Caesar informs them that he left his fumigation gear in there, where Veronica's keys are. He also adds that Veronica needs her keys. Thinking nothing is out of the ordinary, the couple lets Caesar go, and Caesar successfully deceives the couple. After the eventful morning, he heads downstairs only to find that he is going to be dismissed from the job. The two supervisors inform him that he has two weeks to gather his things before permanently being laid off. While doing so, Veronica consoles him and offers some stew to cheer him up. However, the distressed Caesar insults the kind lady by saying that she will forever be alone and that the tenants in the apartment only talk to her out of pity. Veronica then walks away crying and bumps into Clara and Marcos who are on the way to the lobby. When Clara greets the old lady, she just gives a faint smile as she goes up to her apartment. Learning that the couple is having a trip out of town, Caesar dwells on it and gets in an extremely sad mood. After weeks, he returns to the rooftop and contemplates again on his inability to find any happiness in the world. Feeling hopeless, he gets on the edge to take his own life, but he spots Clara and Marcos back at the building. The two have a big fight after finding out that Clara is four weeks pregnant. Because they have not seen each other for six weeks, Marcos finds it strange for her to be pregnant as they also use protection whenever they get intimate. Clara defends herself by saying that according to the doctor, it is possible, but Marcos remains unconvinced, causing a bump in the relationship. Far from their knowledge, Caesar has caught up on all the information while he hides under the bed. When the couple falls asleep, he uses chloroform to put them out again and tells the unconscious Clara that their affair is starting to bear fruit. He then removes his shirt before climbing in bed and in between the couple to get intimate with Clara. 
The following day, Marcos knocks at Caesar's quarters asking him to check Clara's apartment as he thinks that there is a bug problem again. Inside, Marcos finds out Caesar has been drugging Clara with chloroform. Filled with rage, Marcos attacks Caesar, trying to extract more information, but Caesar maintains a cool manner. After Caesar says that Clara does not mind it, Marcos becomes more agitated and holds Caesar's head against a closet, but still, Caesar does not fight back. When Marcos tackles him to the bed, Caesar uses a piece of broken glass to stab Marcos in the neck and drags the poor man around the apartment. He lets him bleed to death inside the bathtub, and leaves a piece of glass in his hand to make it look like Marcos took his own life. Afterward, he fixes the apartment while completely disregarding the overflowing tub and Marcos. Eventually, the authorities are contacted about the situation, and all people inside the building gather around. Caesar is summoned by the officers and on the way, he sees Ursula give a smirk, indicating that she has knowledge of what happened. In Clara's apartment, a disastrous scene welcomes him inside as she cries uncontrollably while an officer consoles. One of them questions Caesar about Marcos but gets dismissed right away. On his way back to his quarters, he sees a note saying I saw you, knowing that Ursula is aware that he was involved in Marcos' death. Caesar sneaks into Ursula's mother's apartment and chases the poor girl around. She runs to her parents' room only to find out that Caesar had drugged them. He grabs Ursula and threatens her and her loved ones if she rats him out. Clara's moving day finally comes, as she goes down to the lobby, she could not even utter one word as she remains in disbelief about Marco's death. As she leaves, Caesar seems to indulge in the joy of seeing her sad, happily smiling at the sight of her tearful face. Months have passed and Clara has delivered a healthy baby boy. Out of nowhere, she sees a familiar envelope and finds out that the letter is from Caesar who reveals that he is the father of her child. He also writes he is hoping that every time she looks at their baby, she will think of him, and finally thanks her for helping him find happiness. Clara embraces her baby in tears as Caesar takes pride in what he has done. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.